kids, Mrs. McMahon or Mrs. Muffin here, ready to teach an art lesson. This lesson is for our kindergartners, but really anyone in any grade could do this project. I definitely made an example for this project and I had a great time doing it. It's based on a book that I think is great for all ages, but again, this one I did specifically make for our kindergartners this year. Before we start our lesson, I wanna do a little check-in. I want you to think to yourself, how am I feeling? Not I, Mrs. Muffin, but you, the student. How are you feeling right now? How are you feeling today? There's a lot of stressful things in the world, I know that, but how do you feel right now? Do you feel pretty good? Do you feel stressed out? Are you worried you can't learn all of those letters in the alphabet? How's, how's class going? How's life going? I want you to stop and think, how do I feel right now? Okay, well, I know I feel pretty good today. I'm in a good mood, but I want everyone to take a deep breath with me. That way, if you're in a good mood or maybe you're not in a very good mood, either way, we can all take a deep breath and come together and be ready for art. So I want you to sit up straight, take a deep breath in and out. If you'd like, you could take a few more deep breaths in and out. <sighs> Breathing is an amazing tool. We do it every day. We don't think about it most of the time, right? Hopefully you're just breathing all on your own. But sometimes if you're feeling a little stressed out or you're having a hard day, or maybe you just don't feel ready for art, you're a little too wiggly, taking a deep breath is a great way to focus and get ready for whatever it is. It could be your math lesson, and in this case, it's our art lesson. So we've taken our deep breath. We think about how do I feel right now? If I don't feel very good, what can I do to feel better? Hopefully the answer is make some art. If you're not feeling great, then this art lesson will hopefully make you feel a little bit better, okay? If you are feeling great, then awesome. This art lesson will help you for another time when maybe you're not feeling great or you feel great and you're gonna have some fun. Okay, let's get started. Today, you're gonna need only a few supplies. You're gonna need a piece of paper, as far as the size, that's gonna be up to you and what you have. I know that we're not at school right now and we don't have our usual tools. So we might have different size papers. Some of you might have notebooks and that's okay too. Whatever you have that you can draw or paint on that's safe. So not the floor, not the wall, paper. Today I'm using this paper. It's a little bit thicker, it's a watercolor paper. If you just have a thinner paper, that's totally fine. Whatever you have that you can use, that's gonna be okay but you need one piece of paper. You also need a pencil. It can be a regular pencil or bigger pencil. You want something that you can draw with and erase. So you need one pencil, pencil. The next thing you're gonna need is something to make your picture colorful. You can use crayons, color pencils, markers, um, even paint if you have supervision. If you have somebody at home helping you out, helping you with the paint, saying it's okay for you to use those supplies. I'm okay if you wanna use some paint. For my example, I just use crayons, a marker, and pencils on my piece of paper. So that's it for the supplies. You need a piece of paper, you need a pencil, and then some crayons or markers, whatever supplies you have at home that you can make your art colorful with. Today, our goal for our art lesson is to talk about our worries. You might be surprised in art, we don't always talk about things like that, but I want us to talk about our worries. A worry is something that kind of bothers us and makes us feel scared or afraid or makes us feel like we can't do something. I know a lot of us are worried about stuff happening in the world right now. And that's why I wanted to do an art lesson where we talk about our worries and ways that we can make those worries go away, or at least ways that we can make ourselves feel better even though those worries are still happening. It's okay to be worried, we're humans. Every person on the planet worries about something, but we need to learn ways or strategies that we can feel better about our worries. And that's the goal of today's lesson. In order to help us learn a little bit more about worries and how to make them feel a little less intense, how to make those worries go away, we are gonna be reading this book. The Very Hungry Worry Monsters. Now, if you're watching this on Canvas, then I'm gonna read this book to you right now. If you're on YouTube, you're gonna to have to find this book. If I were to read this book on YouTube, 
then the people who wrote the book wouldn't be very happy with me. So I definitely recommend this book. You can look for it online. You can buy a copy of it. I definitely recommend it. It's a wonderful book. But this is the book we're going to read. The Very Hungry Worry Monsters Will Eat All Your Worries Away. This book is by Laura Ed, or Edie, not quite sure how you say that, and Rosie Greening. The Very Hungry Worry Monsters. Hopefully you learned a little something about what to do if you feel worried. The main idea with this book here is that we're going to make a monster that's actually a really helpful friend. This monster is going to take our worries and they're going to gobble them right up. So if we're worried about something, we're just going to find that thought, that idea, that worry monster and pretend that they are gobbling up our worries. I really liked it in the story when she couldn't find her worry monster and she started to freak out a little bit. And then she thought, okay, what do I need to do so I feel less worried? Do you remember what she did? She did three things. First, she said, calm down. How do we calm down? Well, she took a deep breath. Remember in the beginning when we said, if we're having a bad day or we just need to get ready for art, what are we going to do? We're going to take a deep breath in and let it out. I like to take my deep breath in through my nose and let it out my mouth. This immediately makes me feel a little bit more calm. If I'm really worried, I might take five deep breaths, 10 deep breaths, an hour of deep breaths. If I'm only a little bit worried, then maybe I'll just take one deep breath. That's okay. That's the great thing about deep breaths. They don't cost money. You can do that anywhere you are and it can help you feel better anytime or any place. Okay, so the first thing she did was calm down and take a deep breath. The second thing she did was think of fluffy puppies. Now, maybe you didn't love fluffy puppies. Maybe you do. You get to choose what you think of that helps you feel calm and happier and less worried. I said in the video, and I'm going to think of my kitties. I have two kitties, Kato and Vivian, and that's what I'm going to think about. I'm going to think about my kitties and it's going to make me feel calmer. You might think of kitties like me. You might think of fluffy puppies. Maybe you'll think of lizards or ice cream or pizza or going to the movies, you get to choose what your happy thought is. So we're gonna take a deep breath and calm down. We're gonna think of our happy thought. For me, it's fluffy kitties. And then the last thing that she did is she wrote down the worry. Now I know that writing down an entire sentence about a worry might be a little tricky for some of you right now. So we take our deep breath, we think about the happy thing, like the fluffy kitties, and then we say out loud, this is my worry. So let's say I'm worried about memorizing the alphabet. So I would say out loud, I'm worried about having to memorize the entire alphabet. Okay, you've said it out loud now. What else can you do with that worry? You can have a worry monster, gobble it up. Today's lesson inspired by this book is that we are going to create worry monsters. And then I want you, if you can, to take that worry monster and put it up somewhere in your bedroom or maybe near your school space where you're learning online this year. Then I want you to look at that worry monster anytime you feel worried. If you start to freak out and go, how am I supposed to memorize all these letters? Or how am I supposed to learn how to write my name? I want you to think about that worry monster and imagine it gobbling up your worry. And then take your deep breath. Think about your happy thing like the kitties or the puppies and then move on. We know the goal of our lesson. It's to learn a little bit about worries and how we can make them disappear. Then we heard this wonderful story, The Very Hungry Worry Monsters, and hopefully it inspired you with some ideas for a worry monster that you can make of your own. Now, when making your worry monster, it can be any shape you want. It can be sort of shaped like a person with a head and shoulders and arms, or it could be shaped like an octopus. It could be shaped like a squirrel. It could be shaped like a cheese sandwich. It's your worry monster. It can look however you want. I am gonna recommend a few things though as we go along the way. Now, I have already made a sample worry monster, but I'm gonna make another one with you on this video. So here's my first sample. My worry monster 
is very friendly looking because he's not a scary monster. He's a good monster. If I'm freaking out and worrying about something, I know that this fellow with the big tummy, he's going to gobble up those worries. I give him an extra eyeball. You can give your worry monster one eye, two eyes, 20 eyes, as many eyes as you can draw. And then I gave him a little nose, mouth. I gave him these big teeth so he can gobble up those worries. And then he has arms that are kind of like an octopus would have and a tail kind of like a monkey would have. And then I colored him green with spots. He's a little bit soft. And then I don't like to leave the background on my art blank. So I colored in my background with orange and yellow crayon. Now this entire picture I made with just crayons and then I used a black marker to outline my worry monster. Online, I'm not too worried about your art getting lost. You're making it at your house and you'll keep it at your house. But if we were at school, there's always something that I ask my students to do and that is on the back of their paper, write their name and their teacher. I know it's the beginning of the year and you might not know that very well. You can have someone help you, but I want you to practice being able to write your name and your teacher's name. Don't write the word teacher, write your teacher's name. That way, when we get back to school, you'll show up and I'll say, write your name and teacher's name. And all of my students will be like, you got it, Mrs. McMahon. We already know how to do that. And this way, it doesn't get lost. Then I can organize your art and get it back to you at school after we hang it up in the hallways. So make sure you put your name and teacher's name. Even if we were at school, artists, when they create paintings, sign their painting with their name. That's a good habit to start practicing now. Okay. So if you remember, what's the first thing I do to my paper when I start any assignment? I was just talking about it. I know we're at home, but we want to practice. So when we get back to school, we're ready. We turn over our paper and we write our name and our teacher's name. We don't write the word teacher. I'm just doing that because I have several classes and they have different teachers. We write the name of our teacher, whoever is our homeroom teacher. Once we've done that, we flip it over and we're gonna start drawing our monster. Now, I showed you last time, my last monster had a smooth body here, but a fluffy tummy, some spots, a monkey tail, three eyes and octopus arms. This time, I'm gonna try and make a different looking monster. Now, do I start right away with my marker? No. Do I start right away with my crown? No, I start with a pencil first. I want to use pencil so that if I do something I don't like, I can erase it or I can color over it. Now your paper can go this way or this way. It does not matter. It just depends on which way your monster is going to fit better. Let's see. I think I'm going to draw a monster kind of like the one in the book. If you remember, the monster in the book is pretty fluffy all around and he has horns two eyes and a really big mouth and just a couple teeth here. I'm gonna try and do something pretty close to that. I don't wanna copy it though, so I'll do it a little bit different. First, my monster needs a big head, so I'm gonna draw a big oval shape. Does it matter if my oval is a little smaller? No. Does it matter if it's a little wobbly? No. And even if it is, it's in pencil, it's okay. After I draw that, I'm gonna give him two horns just like the monster in the book. Give him some fluffy hair, make his hair a little fluffy on the sides too. Then I'm gonna give him a body. All I have to do is just two lines like that. And then I'll give him some hands. He's reaching his hands out like that so he can capture those worries for me. A big mouth. Now do you see how this line is a little overlapped? Does that matter? No! We make it work just like Muffin Cat. Even if we make a mistake, we're gonna erase that or move on or cover it up. Not a big deal. And then I'm gonna give him two big eyes. A circle in the middle. And then I want to give him some teeth too. Give him a tooth there there. Maybe I'll give him more teeth than the, the book had. I'm going to give him five teeth. I think he's pretty much ready. 
I don't need to draw all of the details in pencil. Now I'm ready for marker. Now this marker is a permanent marker. If you're at home, make sure you ask permission before you use a marker like this, okay? And do we color anything else with this marker? No, only our paper. So I'm gonna start outlining it. You don't have to outline this, by the way. If you're worried and you're saying, I don't have a marker like that at home, that's okay. You don't have to outline any of your art. The only reason I like to is because I'm making a video and it's a little easier to see the marker and because I like how it kind of outlines everything. But you don't have to use a marker. I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you're able to, during art, during the lesson I want you to listen, but during this part when you're drawing, you're totally allowed to put on some music and make your space comfortable so that while you're making art, you're really having a good time. That's one nice thing. If you're at school, I get to choose the music, huh? But if you're at home, you can choose what you want to listen to. And is it okay if my marker doesn't match my pencil? Yes, it's totally okay. Oops, that's okay. give him a nose. A little nose. Okay, now my monster's ready. If I want, I can erase the extra pencil. That's why I always use pencil and I have an eraser with me. Get rid of those extra lines. Doesn't have to be perfect though. Now I'm ready to color. Okay kids, I hope you had fun coloring your worry monster. And remember, when you're worried and when you're freaking out, what do we do? We take a deep breath. We think of something happy like the fluffy puppies or the kitties. And then we let our worry monsters gobble away our worries. And don't forget to share your art with your homeroom teacher. You can send it to me at my email on Canvas or you can send it to your teacher and then we'll be able to put your art up on a gallery for all of the other students at your school to see. So don't forget, have your parent or guardian, somebody take a picture 
of your art project when you finish it and have them share it with me or your homeroom teacher so we can see your wonderful worry monsters.